Hey guys, so I'm back. It is currently 2.34 p.m. and I'm eating the rest of my Wendy's, um, 4 for 4 from Wendy's and drinking my lemonade, but I'm going to get ready to start. So I want to share with you guys the utensils and everything I'm going to be using for this study. So, um, I literally have everything on bed. So I have my notebook that I use. This notebook is from Walmart. It's from the Class X Stationery. It's the Pink Chandelier Lauren Collection. It's just a, a dotted notebook. You guys have seen me use this before when I did the first lesson. I did a video. Click the on the screen to go watch it. But I'm using this notebook till it runs out. And we're doing the adult Bible teacher. Um, basically the summer Sunday school booklet adult version. Whether you have the student or the teacher. Um, I have the teacher because obviously I'm teaching. So we have that and um, that's a necessity. So I have post-its here. Um, I'm just using this little thing I have with a bunch of like post-its in here you guys can see literally like several post-its so we have that just in case utensils i have both zebra mount liner packs these are the 25 count in here and this is the 15 count brush liners um i like the pointed edge on these a lot better the fine point i also took out my le pens i want to try these out today um so i have all the packs so i have the pastel color pack the dark colors which i probably won't use the dark colors honestly but i also have the bright and neons i most likely will stick to the bright and pastel pack instead of the neon and the dark so i can put those to the side because i'm not going to use those but i will use these two packs um today bibles i have the thompson king reference bible out because i'm going to need it i always have this bible when i study always um, another study Bible I have is the Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson, the King James. So, uh, I think they're both King James, yeah. This is the Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson, King James. Thompson King reference is in the King James. I have my, um, Holman CSB Fisher of Men Bible. This is a Bible that I received, um, from Sierra, but I did receive a paperback copy from my ordination, which is on my shelf, and I don't want to use it, so I'm super glad that Sierra actually got me the leather touch. Um, because I definitely want to keep that paper back because it's sentimental. That was when I got ordained. It's signed for my leaders. So we have this um, because there's some great stuff in there about evangelizing. And I always want to make sure that I'm getting something about evangelism out of the text. That's something I'm working on doing every time I study. And then we have my go-to Bible. If you don't know where my go-to Bible is, I will leave the link here. You can just click the article to that video, but it is the New King James Spirit-Filled Life Bible. Is that the name of the... Is that the name? Because you know I'm a little slow. Yeah, the New King James Spirit-Filled Life Bible. I love this Bible so much. I will have an updated um, uh, Bible review on it because it's literally become my go-to. I used to love my Woman's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson, but this one is so much better. I love it so much more. It is from Thomas Nelson. Um, I have a thing for Thomas Nelson Bibles. I love their commentaries because their commentaries are not um, opinionated. They're factual. They give you definitions. They give you numbers. Um, they talk about maps and artifacts and stuff. So I love commentary like that. In study Bibles, I don't like opinionated study Bibles. So that is that. So that is everything I think that I'll be using. Like I said, I also have Blue Letter Bible and Bible Hub on my computer. Um, well, I said that in a clip that I didn't show you guys, but I do have my computer here. You guys can see with Blue Letter Bible and Bible Hub open. Um, Bible Hub, I'll be using the text analysis. And for the uh, Blue Letter Bible, I will be using it for commentary once I write my thoughts and um, get an understanding for myself. So the way I study is when I'm studying the Word of God, I allow God to reveal whatever it is He wants to reveal, the Holy Spirit to reveal whatever needs to be revealed. And um, once I'm done, if I feel like I can't really get anything out of a verse or pull out of it, I will then go into my study Bible and read those notes. And then if I still don't get it, I will then go on to Blue Letter Bible and use their commentary section. Um, so, yes, that is it. But um, the next clip will be me starting. I'm going to finish my food first because <laughs> I did not finish. I'm going to finish my food first, set my page up, and then we will commence the studying. Okay, guys, so I am ready and set to go in. So I forgot to mention two of the utensils that I'll also be using are my zebra pen. So I have the G301, which is the gel pen, is a 0.7 millimeter. And then I have the ballpoint, which is a F301, 0.7. 
I have blue and black. So this is the black set. And here's the blue set. But I'm going to use black because I like the way black looks. So I have that. I already have my uh, page set up. So on the top, I put Sunday um, summer school book. Then I put the lesson. And then it has daily reading. So day one, which is Monday, would be sin, oppression, and um, deliverance. For that, I have to read Judges 3. 1 through 11. I am also using the Le Pen sets. I'm using the two sets. So I have the bright colors and also the pastel. So from the pastel set, I'm using peppermint, which is this like mint green. And this color is called wisteria, which is like a lavender. And then from the bright colors, I'm using uh, these five colors. So this one, if I'm not mistaken, is light blue. This is light green. This is orange, right? A pink I need a pink and then this one is called periwinkle so those are the colors I'll be using to separate the days um so yeah let me put these pins to the side I was gonna record on my other phone but it needs to charge it's been it's been completely dead so hopefully I can record while listening to music um so yeah I'm going to I guess start off with orange right um I'm going to put the scripture in a pen. So I'm going to take my black pen and just write the scripture on the side. Judges 3, 1 through 11. Where are my highlighters? I'm just taking the Zebra Myliner brush tips. Um, and we'll use yellow because it's summer. Why not? Actually, I'll use a dark yellow. So the brush tips... Um, literally have like a brush tip end so I'm just going to use that oh that is not cute these I forgot that these highlighters do not work well with um, the zebra gel pens forgot about that <laughs> they don't work well they actually smear so uh, yeah I might not be using the gel pens we'll see but whatever but um I want to use another color. Uh, I use orange, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys my page set up again. So again, it did smear, which I don't like. But again, I'm sorry if you guys hear that, but this is going to be um, uh, sped up. So yeah, but here is the page set up. Um, summer Sunday School, lesson number one, Ehud defeats Moab. Then for Mondays, reading the topic is sin, oppression, and deliverance. I have to read Judges 3, 1 through 11. And then I'm going to take my notes here of whatever I get. Um, the actual uh, Sunday School booklet does have the lesson text in the King James already. So I already have my new King James as well as my CSB open just in case. But um, I'm not going to be reading from this, which is why I have it folded like that. So that I can focus on these here. So yeah, I'm going to dive right in using my new King James to read the specific scripture that I need to read, which is going to be Judges 3, 1 through 11. So I'm going to fix the camera, bring you guys down some, put some music on, hopefully it all works out, and I'll come back to you guys, I guess, right before I go into the actual text for Sunday. Um, so I'm going to do Monday through Thursday, Monday through Saturday, um, and then I'll give you guys my thoughts, and then you'll see me study for Sunday's lesson, and then... I'll give you guys my thoughts. So that's what we're going to do.
Okay, guys. So, I just read the first, just Monday alone. Um, and again, that's Judges 3, verses 1 through, through 11. And my God. Um, as you guys saw, I prayed before I got into the study, of course. And I've read through Judges twice already. Um, well, three times if you count previous before I got this deep into the Word of God. But um, let me actually pause this real quick. My diffuser. Okay. But, my God. Um, here are the notes that I got. Just personal notes. Now, you, you saw me looking at my computer because I was looking up um, the biblical meaning of the numbers 8 and the number 40. And um, I think I should have looked up another number. Right? No. Yeah, just numbers 8 and um, not like numbers in the Bible, but like the actual number 8 and the number 40. I looked it up. Um, it's a website called biblestudies.org where they will give you the meaning of numbers biblically um, for specific numbers. So I use that site to get a deeper understanding. And my God, you guys, my mind is blown. Um, you saw me worshiping. I was listening to Embassy Worship. We already know how I feel about Embassy Worship, okay? Click the I or down below to go listen to the playlist. But <sighs> I just learned so much that I didn't really think about like I pulled so much out and I actually need to get another color I'll use this mint I don't know if this is going to work with these pens so this is a trial run hopefully it works but there were some questions in here that I wrote not too bad but I wouldn't use the highlighters with these I just wanted to highlight the, the questions that I personally wrote, but just, wow. Wow, that's all I can say. Um, I don't even wanna go in and read any additional notes, but mind you, I didn't even pull out my other Bibles, read them. I just read the text um, and let the Holy Spirit guide me and I got a, a, a lot more notes than I thought I would for 11 verses. Um, so basically what I got is that um, God, basically uh, this is about the nations remaining in the land. God allowed a few nations to remain. He let the Canaanites stay, the Sidonians, the Hivites, and um, I think there was the Amorites, the per Perizzites, the Jebusites um, and he did this to test the children of Israel one he wanted to test their knowledge about war and secondly he wanted to test and see if they would obey his commandments even when they are living in um, a place that is I guess occupied by other nations so he wanted to test them and of course they failed because the children of Israel consistently fail um, they failed they intermarried they mingled um, they worshiped the other gods Baal and um, Ash, Ashra, Ashria, whatever her name is, um, they forgot who God was, and of course, God, being a, a righteous father, he, you know, had ang he was angry and allowed them to be sold into slavery for eight years. Um, and the children of Israel then cried out, and then God brought up a deliverer who was Caleb's nephew. Um, I can never say his name right, Othniel. I think that's how you say it. It's on the screen, but um, yeah. And um, of course, he delivered them, and they were free for forty years until we know how that goes um and pretty much what i got is just okay so basically god could remove all of your issues all of those things that are opposing you but he chooses not to for the sole purpose of testing you um and god has every right to test us you know whether it's to test our knowledge to test us against temptation to test us whatever now he doesn't really test us against temptation let me correct that but um he has every right to test us to see if we will obey him in certain circumstances um so these tests teach us things about god it teaches us things about um, ourselves it reveals our flaws and our faults and in the children of israel being tested by god um, they failed they were able to see their flaws they weren't really sold out and committed to god because they were so easily swayed into intermarrying and worshiping baal and his wife ashra whatever her name is um so I said, will you obey God when temptation comes? Um, I just, that was something that popped in. So then it says, I, I wrote, sometimes you may have to avoid, 
I'm sorry, sometimes you may have to be around those unlike you, but that doesn't mean you need to dwell among them. And it instantly brought back to me Psalms 1 and 1, where it says not to sit with the scorners or to um, stand with the unrighteous and stuff like that. That just popped in my head. Um, and then I wrote that the chosen have fallen. Um, oh, I said that the chosen have fallen in line with the unlikely. Um, and then I said, do you lose sight enough to forget God? The fact that you forgot who your father was, you forgot God. Like, it's amazing how we can go through life and literally forget who God is, forget him in general, and everything else will cloud our vision from him. It, it's like, wow. Um, then I wrote that God gave them over to their sin and allowed them to be taken for eight years. This was righteous anger. It was a consequence that saved them because in God allowing you to, to be taken um, over by your sin, um, you learn things. You learn to correct yourself. You learn correction. Um, and then I put that eight represents new beginnings, new order. Um, it took them eight years for them to become new children okay like new children new belief systems things like that um then i said in their punishment they cried out for help so again it's like do you only commune with god in times of trouble do you only cry out to him when you're in trouble or do you cry out to him when things are good um and being a merciful loving compassionate father he raised up one person and um i put that only god can raise up a true leader a lot of people try to raise themselves up but it's like you can't raise yourself up without god god has to raise you up because there's something with um his power that he has to input into you um, and without that, there is no way you can lead people, period. Um, then I put those called by God will have the spirit upon them to do his work. And then um, it said that they, the, the land rested for 40 years. And I noticed that there's something with the number 40. So immediately had to look it up. And basically 40 symbolizes a period of testing trial or probation. Um, so, you know, it, it just is it's crazy that that number is so pivotal. And let me see if I can find it. So um, it talks about Moses' life, how he uh, lived 40 years in Egypt and then 40 years in the desert. Um, there's something else with the prophet Jonah. Um, he had 40 days, I believe, to give the prophecy about the destruction. Um, the prophet Ezekiel laid on his right side for 40 days. Elijah went 40 days without food and water. Jesus was tempted by the enemy three times um, during his 40 days and 40 nights that he spent. Like, it's it's a lot to this 40 days. And 40 is a, a, is a period of testing and trial um, and probation. So I put that in those 40 years. It's time for you to learn humility and to be chastised for your sin. So that was just Monday, you guys. Like, I'm mind blown. And again, these are personal thoughts outside of, like, the number information I got from my computer. But I didn't use any other commentary and... I'm mind blowing myself because a lot of the times when I do read the Old Testament, I find that I do have to go into the study section notes um, in my other Bibles. But God really like revealed some stuff to me today. Like, wow. Um, again, I love uh, excavating and studying the word. So this, this, wow. I'm like, do I even go further? Because it's not like a full study. So I don't think I'm going to go deeper into these notes. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to go any deeper than that. I'm going to just leave it there and move on to day two. Um, wow. That's all. I do want to read the note, actually, from this Bible because it's about um, apologetics, I think. Mm, the Holy Spirit is the only one. Okay. So, for verse 10, where it says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon um, Othniel, is basically here it says that the Holy Spirit is the only one who makes believers able to do God's work, which is true. So I just wanted to read that. Um, okay, so now I have to read Deuteronomy 28. Um, 28 in its entirety for Tuesday reading to Friday reading, but it's broken into certain like parts. So I'm actually going to turn to that. And you guys saw me highlighting in my Bible. I, in this Bible, I do have an annotating key, which is why I'm going to do an updated review and things like that to show you guys my annotating key. Um, but Deuteronomy 28 and how many verses is it? 57 verses? It's 68 verses. I only have to read verses 1 through 37. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to do that. And this one is called Blessings for Obedience. 
so using my gel pen I'm gonna write Tuesday Scripture is going to be Judges 28. Okay, I'm done with this pen. I'm going to put this pen back in the case. As I'm done with the pens, they'll go back in the case. Um, so I guess I want to use periwinkle. I'll use this periwinkle color um, to do my notes. Okay. So I'm going to use it back on and speed up this portion um it may cut out because like i said this is taking long um for me to do and this is literally how i would study um for sunday school if i was consistent with it of course but i'm, I'm enjoying this so i'm just gonna go in the zone i still got my drink here okay so we're gonna get back to the studying so I'll fix the camera back and put my music back on and go back in <laughs> Alright guys, I'm done. 
it took me about two two and a half three hours um to do this but um i got some good stuff got some good stuff let me get stuff um i really enjoyed it um i don't know i just felt in my spirit that i needed to like sit down and just get these lessons done um because i haven't really been partaking in the sunday school for the past two months but um it was really good so here's all my notes this was actually the per the lavender is the actual like lesson text um and i also like wrote in the book so i highlighted read in the book wrote a note here underlined and things like that so yeah this was really gruesome and disgusting <laughs> um it does talk about assassination and it was like weird the way it happened because it was really like descriptive and i literally put ill um verse 22 so judges 3 verse 22 i put ill lol because it was disgusting <laughs> Um, and then I also put ill here when they were like breaking it down because ill, disgusting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really enjoyed um, doing this today. So let me just put my bookmarks back where it belongs. Put that one to the next page. Put this one on to lesson two. Lesson 2 was about Gideon, so I'm super excited about that. But, yeah, very, very long. Um, I know, excessive. Uh, as far as these pins go, I like the way these pins write. They're really smooth. Um, there's really no... Yeah, there's no bleeding. There is shadowing, but that's the case, period, with this notebook. Even on this page, it's shadow, so... I like it. I'm really liking these pins a lot. I'm definitely going to try them in my journal bibles. But um, these are the Le Pen pens. Again, you can find these at Michael's or any kind of art supply store. Great pens. Um, yeah. You don't have to, you know, do in-depth studies like this. This was not even an in-depth study. This was me just doing Sunday school lessons. And normally it's not this long because obviously you have daily readings. So it would not be two, two and a half hours, three hours long. But I wanted to just knock out the first Sunday's worth of um, lesson plan and get that done. So I did. And, um yeah now i'm about to clean my room up and um it's 5 27 right now i think i started at like two something don't remember but um it's 5 27 right now so what i'm about to do is i'm about to get in my bed play some video games um yeah about to literally play some video games actually i need to track a package because i have a shirt order to do and i think the shirt is coming earlier today it's supposed to come on tuesday but it's coming today so that's cool i can get that shirt done and have that order sent out monday but um yeah I think that's it so i'm gonna get up this video if you have any questions comments or concerns if you want to know about any of the resources that i use let me know when i was on my computer i was using like i said the biblestudies.org i'll leave the link down below to um the biblical meaning of the numbers 840 as well as 18 because i had to look that up but um, i'll leave those links down below um that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this video i will have more of these like study with me videos coming so i know a lot of you guys are interested in seeing how i study and things like that and i do different types of studies so i definitely want to show you all um so yeah that's it so like i said i'm about to go get let me grab my game right now because it should be all charged yes she is at a hundred percent so she and i are about to play a few games I probably will get on the PlayStation as well. We have a PlayStation 4 in my house as well as an Xbox One. So the Xbox is in my sister's room. The PlayStation is in the living room. So I am planning to play uh, the PS4 today. That's the plan. But I'm going to get off here, charge my phone because it's dying. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.